girls, it's time to close your books and get ready for the field trip. What'd you bring for lunch? Ham sandwich and chips. Where are we going anyway? We're going on our social studies field trip. Man, how dull. The sixth graders get to go to the zoo for their field trip, and we get stuck learning about history. All right, boys and girls, it's time to load up and go on the bus. Make sure you mind your manners today, and I'll see you this afternoon, all right? Game Boy. Do you have any good games? Yeah, we're going to need something fun to do on this boring trip. Man, this bus ride is bumpy. Welcome, third graders. Who is he? I am General John O'Neill. In the year 1874, I brought Irish immigrants from the crowded mining cities of Houston, Pennsylvania, to this area to start a better life. Together we founded your town, the town of O'Neill, Nebraska. What is going on? Follow me as I take you on a tour of your town's past. Whoa, we're black and white! Whoa. Look at this newspaper, it says 1913. Yes, when the first group of colonists arrived with me in 1874, they had to immediately build a shelter. The 13 men, two women, five children built a crude sod house and they called it the Grand Central Hotel. And they called the town Holt City. Then I went back east to recruit more settlers. I bet that hotel wasn't really quite so grand. You are very right. Did you know that timber had to be hauled in over 18 miles? There were no trees all the way to here to Eagle Creek up north. Wow! After years of bringing out hardy settlers and homesteaders, the people decided to name their town after me, O'Neill City. Cool! I never met anyone who had a town named after them before. Over the years, some fine establishments were built in O'Neill City. Some are still standing in your time. It's the law office of Moses P. Kincaid. I remember Mrs. Sullivan telling us a story in social studies class. Mr. Kincaid started the Land Act, where settlers got free land for settling on it. Mr. Kincaid worked as an, a lawyer in the upstairs office of this building. He later became a judge and later became a congressman. He realized that 180 acres of Nebraska Sand Hills land was not enough to make a living on. Those 180 acres became 640 acres. So he helped the Kincaid Land Act pass in Congress. That's a lot of free land. Well, they earned it by the time they worked that sandy soil, built a home, completed tons of paperwork that was required of them. Well, that explains why they kept this brick building all these years and still use it as a museum until this day. Our next stop on this tour is the Golden Hotel. This fine establishment was opened in 1913. It became a symbol of prosperity for O'Neill City. Wow, that's a long time for a hotel to remain in business. Yeah. Mr. O'Neill, can we walk up the grand staircase? Sure, but be careful. Some people think Al Capone's ghost haunts the hotel. It's rumored that he once stayed here. Actually, the lawyer who finally put Mr. Capone behind bars for tax evasion was from O'Neill, Mr. William Freilich. Now look to the northwest corner of O'Neill's main intersection. Here you'll find the first National Bank of O'Neill, established in the 1880s. It was huge! It must have had a lot of money. It wasn't just a bank. 
This beautiful building housed a bank, a post office, newspaper, J.P. Mann Clothing Company, Dread Store, other offices on the upper level. Wow, I can't believe how much things are different. Even though this building is still a bank, Great Western Bank, those businesses are now spread up and down Douglas Street for many blocks. Where did the kids go to school back then? Let's head north up 4th Street, three blocks. Here, the first public school was built in 1890. Where is this building now? In 1913, a new building was erected on the same site, and it was used until the mid-1990s when it was condemned. Children and teachers were moved into the 1938 edition and eight modular classrooms. Gee, General O'Neill, it's just an empty lot now. Yes, the 38 building is used for Northeast Community College, and we still use the gym. But our school is on the northern edge of town in a super facility that opens its doors in December 1996. Well, I've really got to get you kids back to that school, or Mrs. Sullivan will be worried about what happened to you. Let's hop back onto that time machine, I mean, school bus. Mr. O'Neill, that was great. Thanks for the blast from the past. Wait, what's going on? Did somebody push the wrong button? General O'Neill, what's happening? I was afraid of this, students. I think I hit the wrong button. Instead of 2007, I think we're headed to 3007. Oh, no! Welcome to the future of O'Neill. On your right, you will see the Kincaid Museum Extraordinaire. All the historical artifacts are preserved in 3D virtual reality. And of course, this time machine is available for rides to the past for school groups still. Next you will see the Golden Hot Mart. Hot Mart? That is what we now call hotels and motels combined. This fine establishment features a floating car repair shop, floating rooms of the finest silver and chrome, robots and maids, a hundred foot pool, an elevator which travels at the speed of light up all 50 floors, and the future's finest security. Do we get to see where the kids go to school in the future, too? Of course. A new elementary flies 100 miles in the air. School days are much shorter, especially on Fridays and holidays. Robot teachers do much of the teaching, but students also learn a lot from their learning hats. For baseball and PE, the kids play on a virtual field. In music class, they use their musical instrument remotes, which convert to any instrument at the touch of a button. That sounds like a blast! Speaking of a blast, I better try again to blast you kids back to 2007. They're waiting for you. Good, you need to get your social studies book out. It's time for class. So, boys and girls, did you learn anything today on your field trip? 